<laughs> ah, sorry, I just remembered a really good joke I heard a couple of weeks ago. It was a good one. Anyway, welcome to the Mask Fan Attic. It's always nice to see you here in the Mask Fan Attic. Uh, mask fans and mask addicts. And tonight, really good one here. Uh, way back in uh, the late 1970s, a man named Charles Curtis started a company called the Savage Eye. And Savage Eye masks were uh, kind of, kind of uh, a thing that exploded uh, onto the scene, uh, seemed like overnight, you know, all of a sudden everybody was saying they were going to be the next Don Post and there was a, there was a huge uh, thing and there were these very high quality masks all made by a guy named Charles Curtis and then uh, before you know what happened, uh, it seemed like suddenly the quality went down and the Savage Eye masks weren't so nice anymore and what happened was that the company was sold to another company who uh, started having them manufactured in Taiwan and the Taiwanese versions were not so nice but the versions that were originally made by the guy who started the company those were, were great masks but um, sadly it seems like through the years more people remember the bad ones than the good ones I guess there was a greater proliferation of the cheap ones made in uh, Taiwan and people tend to think of them as being you know the, the Savage Eye masks but originally the original Savage Eye masks were terrific uh, there was a whole line of kind of fantasy characters like uh, satyrs and demons and things uh, there were uh, Universal Studios monsters and of course the most famous of which is none other than Frankenstein this was back in the late 70s okay back in the late 70s many years later Many years after uh, Savage Eye had come and gone and the people who bought the company were no longer producing the masks or anything, and it's, it's just centuries later, in the year uh, 2013, the same artist, Charles Curtis, the guy who began the Savage Eye company back in the 70s, uh, came out of uh, monster retirement, as it were, to uh, kind of make a, a re-entrance into the world of collector masks, and his first his first mask in many, many years was this particular Frankenstein, which is officially, see it says the Savage Eye, you see it? This is officially a Savage Eye Frankenstein made just for collectors in 2013. And uh, Mr. Curtis had sort of um, forgotten all about a lot of the stuff from the days of masks and had moved on to a lot of other things. He designed furniture, he was a, a very talented uh, illustrator and sculptor who just got away from masks and then he realized uh, that, that there are some people out there who remember having the nice Savage Eye masks many years ago and that were actually big fans of his mask work and he didn't really know that all those years but in 2013 he came out of mask retirement and gave the world a brand new Frankenstein. Now this looks a lot like the Savage Eye Frankenstein masks from back in the day, but this is in fact a new sculpture started from scratch in 2013. This was a limited edition. Uh, altogether there were 65 of them. That would be uh, 15 artist proofs and 50 official masks in the edition. If your math isn't good, get your uh, calculating devices out now and add that up. 15 plus 50, 65. So on the entire planet there are 65 of these. And the cool thing is, each one was uh, completely uh, cast, painted, the hair put on, finished entirely by the same guy, Charles Curtis, the same guy who started the company all those years ago, made these by hand just for collectors in 2013, which is at the time he became aware that there were collectors and that he had fans who cared about his mass work. So uh, this was the result. And I think it's a very cool Frankenstein. I don't know if you can see this on your viewing monitor of choice, but he actually has um, a pretty monumental epic paint job in terms of little tiny veins. Can you see this? He has like tiny little broken capillaries all over the place, little red and um, sort of pink and blue veins. And they're real subtle. You don't see them when this is back on your, on your mask shelf. You have to really be looking really closely to see those little veins but it's a great effect uh, you know really adds some uh, some realism to him and uh, one thing I like about this mask uh, is that, that uh, 
Okay, Frankenstein is kind of an interesting character. He's always an interesting uh, topic for masks because he needs to look kind of sympathetic. He needs to look kind of sad. He needs to not look like a ferocious beast the way like a werewolf or something uh, might look. So this one, I think, and, and all of uh, the, the old Savage Eye Frankenstein masks also really captured that. You know, this mask has the, the world-weary, sad, pathetic, lonely, confused, misunderstood quality to it, and yet it's not completely, uh, completely a frowny face monster. It's, it's a good balance of th those characteristics with underneath there might be a little bit of menace there so that even though he looks sympathetic, you might feel like he could get mad if he wanted to. Does that make sense? You, you with me? Sure. Uh, that's what I like about the expression. It's kind of, it's kind of sad and tired and confused and lonely, and yet uh, you don't want to make him mad. There's just a little. He looks like he could, could be a menace if uh, you pushed him too far, and that's a cool thing. Now, uh, the artist is unsatisfied, dissatisfied, I guess I should say, is not satisfied, let's say that. He's not satisfied at all with his mask because he thinks it doesn't look enough like Boris Karloff. So he's planning already to do another version and try to make the face look more like Boris Karloff. Uh, there's going to be confusion and people are going to think, oh, that's the same one from the 70s, but it actually isn't. It actually is an all-new sculpture. And one of the things that uh, defined the Savage Eye masks back in uh, the old days was they were the first latex masks to have zippers put in. And when I got this one, I thought, uh, oh, it's too bad there's not a zipper in there because then it would be more like the ones that he made back in the 70s. And gadzooks, zounds, and forsooth, if you part the hair, you will see, let me open it a little bit for you, there's a zipper in there, just like in the old days. And I don't know if everybody in the world would be too impressed with that, but for those of us who were around back then, this is a real trip down nostalgia lane here because it has the look and feel and heft and even the smell of the masks that we had when we were kids uh, back in the Cretaceous age. So this edition has been discontinued as of this, or I shouldn't say discontinued, sold out would be the proper way to put it. This has been sold out because it was always intended to be a limited edition of uh, 50 masks. They've been sold out, but you never know when he might do another one, and you never know when you might find one of these on uh, eBay or something, somebody selling one, but uh, I recommend it. It's a cool Frankenstein, and it's, uh, you know, it's got that retro, old school, 70s look. You know, it's, it's a mask that is, uh, at once, a Halloween mask you can put on and wear and frighten the neighbors out of your yard at Halloween, and it is also an art piece for serious collectors. So that makes it pretty cool. And you can see, actually, I should, I almost signed off without showing you this. Why doesn't somebody tell me? You see that? It says Charles Curtis, one of 15. You see that? That's his signature right there. Charles, or Charles Curtis, artist proof, one of 15, six. 13. So that's how you know that's the deal. And since then, uh, the artist has also done a few other masks, including a new version of his uh, satyr. He's done a, a Vlad the Impaler and a monkey and I think a zombie. And uh, well, maybe we'll get to those uh, at some other uh, point. But for now, just feast your eyes on the Savage Eye reissue Frankenstein uh, Collector's Edition from 2013. And the next time, well... I'm tired of you always being in my attic, and I never, never get invited to your attic. You know, turnabout is fair play. Maybe the next time we meet, it won't be in my attic.